we're having to have this meeting outdoors for reasons which I'll come to in a minute, but which are a part of the reason why we believe Rotherham needs respect and respect needs Rotherham. The reason that we're meeting outdoors is because of the political corruption that exists not just here in Rotherham but in many other places and which has cancelled our venue that we booked and contracted to pay for um, but which has been withdrawn from us as a result of skullduggery and dirty tricks which is part of the reason why there is a by-election in Rotherham in the first place. I can't put this any other way. There is a by-election in Rotherham because your MP was a thief. He was a thief of thousands of pounds of the public's money stolen in a way that would have landed any claimant on social security in prison. Yeah. He's been allowed to walk away with his pension intact and with all sorts of media and other commentators trying to pour soft soap over what he did. He stole money from the public and thus there is a by-election here. That by-election has been called in record quick time. One week ago, your MP left the House of Commons in disgrace as a thief and three weeks from now Labour wants you to send another Labour MP to Westminster to reward them, reward them for having foisted a thief upon you as an MP. And we think that you'd be very foolish to do that. We think that you should not reward the political system that has led to you being so woefully mistreated in this way. And the kind of politics that cancels a venue of a party that's standing in an election and causes the cancellation of a, of a democratic meeting in a democratic election is exactly the problem that we have here in Rotherham. I was due to speak here on the 2nd of December. I'm sure I still will be speaking here on the 2nd of December if God spares me. But what's happened is that we got here sooner than we expected to do. And now we are in a by-election campaign. And by the way, there'll be no more cancellations because the law of the land, the representation of the People's Act, means that Rotherham Council must, by law, make available to us and all other candidates in the election premises owned by the local authority for the purposes of election meetings. So I send that as a first message to the council here. This is the last cancellation you'll ever be responsible for in terms of our political meetings. Now we this morning at our head office in Manchester held a selection meeting and we chose as our candidate in this by-election a woman that I have known for many years, a good friend of mine who has fought alongside me in elections here in Britain. She stood in the by-election in Leicester in 2004 for respect and polled the highest number of votes any fourth party candidate had in a hundred years, getting almost 13% of the vote. She stood with me in many political battles here in Britain. She's travelled with me to Iraq under sanctions. She's travelled with me to Palestine under occupation. She is a comrade of mine in the Stop the War Coalition, one of the leadership of the Stop the War Coalition, which moved millions of people in this country in the great battle that we had to try and stop Britain committing the grave offence of invading and occupying Iraq. A war and occupation which, moreover, was supported by your former MP, Dennis McShane, then a Foreign Office Minister and one of the key voices in the media and in Parliament 
in support of that war. Yvonne Ridley comes from the northeast of England, an area almost identical to this, in this respect. The coal mines that were king in her town were closed by Thatcher and thousands of people were thrown onto the scrap heap and many of them have remained there. The steelworks at Consett was closed under Thatcher and thousands of people were thrown onto the scrap heap and many of them have remained there also. She comes from exactly the kind of background that the majority of people in this town come from. She is a Muslim, a sincere, devout Muslim, and that is something that I personally am proud of. But she's not running here as a Muslim. She's running here for respect, for respect for all the communities, wherever they came from, whatever color they are, however they pray. She's standing here to try and bring about a change in this town and its politics and the political culture that exists here. And so we'll be chasing every vote. Whomsoever has that vote, we'll be asking them to give it to us. Because we think that Rotherham deserves better. Deserves better than a thief as an MP. Deserves better than a council that tries to stop other political parties having legitimate political meetings in a by-election campaign. They're running scared of us. That's why they called the election so quickly, when the memories of the people in the town are so fresh about the thief. They would otherwise have left it for months before calling this by-election, hoping that you'd forget about the reasons for the by-election. But you're not going to forget. Nobody has that short a memory. Three weeks. So, we are here to tackle unemployment, poverty, hopelessness, youth unemployment, cuts in public services. This election is not about Iraq. Although she opposed the war on Iraq and McShane and New Labour caused the war on Iraq. This election is not about Palestine. Though she was with Palestine and McShane was a voice of Israel. This is not even about civil liberties. Though last night we were in Bradford for a major event for caged prisoners talking about the destruction of civil liberties in this country under Labour and the Tories and the collusion with torture and extradition and, uh, and the uh, rendition, extraordinary rendition they call it, which means kidnapping people and taking them to be tortured in places like Gaddafi's Libya. It's not about these things, although our record on these things is far, far better than new Labour's. It's about political representation. Does Rotherham deserve to have an MP who's clean, who's not a thief, and who's going to act for the people in Rotherham rather than other people themselves or people in Israel or elsewhere? It's about tackling the critical problems that exist in this town. And so it's my honor, actually, to introduce to you the respect candidate in the Rotherham by-election Yvonne Ridley. Thank you very much for those words, George. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next few weeks to get to meet the people of Rotherham, to listen to what they have to say. Everybody's, you know, is fully aware of the Bradford bounce. Well, uh, let's hope we see the Rotherham revival. Yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's what the people of Rotherham deserve. They deserve some respect following uh, the thieving activities of uh, Dennis McShane. I'm not going to make a whole raft of um, empty promises to the people of Rotherham, but what I will say to them is if you do elect me, I will not be taking any personal expenses at all. I think that um, there's been enough um, greed coming from the 
uh, previous MP and um, I will not, as I say, be taking any expenses at all. I am coming here to very much listen to what people have to say. George has uh, described the uh, destruction of the of mining and the steel industries in Rotherham, the history. That is my DNA. That is my background. I have uh, working class roots and uh, traditionally I was old labour until that party was destroyed uh, by Blair and the likes of McShane. But I still hold true socialist values which are represented in the Respect Party. Now one of the interesting things about having to hold this meeting on the street and uh, I quite like it anyway, being out in, in the street and being able to talk like this. But it's interesting that this council acted within 24 hours to try and silence me. And I'm thinking of all the people on the housing waiting lists who've had to wait years for Rotherham Council to act. All the people who've had complaints about rising damp and repairs that need doing to their homes who've had to wait years. Well, Rotherham Council has shown you today that they can act within hours if they want to. So get on to the council tomorrow and ring them up and let's see some of that um, speed lightning for your housing repairs, your waiting lists and uh, all the other things that you have to, um, account, you know, want to hold the council to account for. I'm here to listen to what you have to tell me and I want to um, hear about uh, your uh, complaints, I want to hear about uh, your feelings, your betrayals, your hopes, your expectations. I'm not going to make empty promises but I'll tell you something, if you have me in your corner I promise I will fight and fight and fight for you. I would consider it a great honour and a privilege to work for you, to work for the people of Rotherham. And I promise you I will not be putting my hands in the till. Um, I'm working class, I'm honest, I do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Something totally alien to the Savile Row socialist Dennis, Dennis McShane and, and his ilk. So, um, that, that's basically my message. I'm here for you. I'm here to listen. I'm here to act. Um, and and uh, I await your instructions. And uh, if anything, you know, we're going to make politics in Rotherham fun. So uh, let's go for the Rotherham revival. Thank you. Respect all of you. Any questions anyone has, media or public? Is that it? We've George, won. George, how do we campaign around these areas? Where, how we, do we stop off? The first thing we need to do is get a campaign office. We need a proper rally in a school or in a public uh, building that they cannot now deny us because the by-election has been called. Indeed, our lawyer is looking at the uh, legal position of having cancelled uh, this event today because the electoral period has begun since the writ was moved. So we need an office. We need a launch rally indoors that we can have time to publicize. That will be in the next few days. Yvonne is going to be full time here from Monday, living here, working here in the head office. We need all of you to bring many more uh, into this campaign. Uh, my brothers uh, in Bradford will be bringing our open top bus uh, down here to Rotherham with the speakers and the music and the banners. We will be taking this election by storm and Yvonne said it's going to be fun it's definitely going to be exciting I don't think any Rotherham election will ever have been <coughs> like it in the past uh, but we will bring hope to those people who felt that politics had nothing to do with them in Rotherham that no matter how you voted nothing changed well let me say this if you vote Labour on the 29th of November, nobody will notice. If you elect Yvonne Ridley on the 29th of November, everybody will notice. Absolutely everybody will have to sit up.
and take notice. That's the message that we want to uh, give. Yes, sir. From the local paper. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've talked about corruption, but there are other things going on. Yeah. I think three things that have come up in the last few weeks. One, 750 jobs going to the local <laughs> hospital. Two, the last pit in Rome is due to close. And the other is, of course, you've had fascists and racists from the EDL and the National Front in Rome. What do you say about those two? Well, let me deal with one of them, if I may, then I'll ask uh, Yvonne to deal with the other two. Uh, I'm an honorary member of the National Union of Mine Workers. I have been for more than 30 years. Uh, due to my work with the NUM in South Wales area and in the miners' strike uh, of 1984-85, I spent virtually every day for an entire year working with the miners' union and for the uh, cause of the mining communities and so I'm hoping that that will stand us in good stead with miners in the last remaining pit and former miners uh, here in Rotherham as anyone who was active in the strike can tell you I was a prominent figure in the support networks throughout the country supporting the great <coughs> historic struggle of the miners to save their jobs and keep their communities uh, together. So we have a, a, a real uh, record to defend in that uh, regard. Um, the public expenditure cuts which have only just begun and which have caused the uh, issue that you raise about the local hospital workers uh, is going to be one of our major uh, campaigning uh, planks. Yvonne. Absolutely. Um, on, on the back of that, the NHS is uh, it's been dismantled, it's been uh, smashed by this government. It was uh, uh, hewn away by the, the previous Labour government and the NHS is dear to the hearts of, uh, of virtually everyone in, in Britain. And, um, and when we see local hospitals being dismantled and destroyed and health workers being thrown out onto the streets, it really, really impacts in a community. And um, uh, your newspaper has, uh, has really taken up the cudgels for this. And the, when I was looking um, at previous um, editions of the paper, I come from a weekly newspaper background and it's absolutely refreshing to see a local independent weekly newspaper um, keeping the the flag of campaigning journalism um, alive so uh, there's that the EDL and the BNP yes uh, they they are everywhere they're an, an epidemic a symptom of um, politics in Britain today where race is being made an issue it's not an issue um, in the respect the politics of uh, race should not be an issue. It's an is it was made an issue by the previous Labour government, um, and in fact some uh, other disgraced MPs were more than happy to hijack the Union Jack, slap it onto their election li literature, and uh, and go after um, the people that are currently being seduced by the likes of the BNP and the EDL. My feeling is that 90% of those who say they support the EDL and the BNP um, are very, very angry people. They're not sure why they're angry, but they are taking it out on um, minority communities because they're told that is the cause of all of your problems. Well, as I said before, I come from a um, county Durham, northwest Durham, an area that, uh, that's mining and steel communities were devastated and there were no um, Muslims in uh, northwest Durham when these uh, communities went down. There were, uh, the poverty and the hardship wasn't caused because of ethnic uh, minority groups coming in to uh, the area. It's, uh, the, the reality is Previous and current governments and uh, are to blame for the uh, the poverty, for the the axe swinging over the local hospital, for the jobs that are on the line, for the um, the hardships that people are going through, and they shouldn't turn their anger 
onto minority groups. They should turn their anger towards the town hall, towards government, towards their uh, so-called elected representatives. That's who they should be turning their anger on. That is the source of uh, their misery. That is the source of the uh, cuts and the hardships that have been felt and uh, impacted in virtually every home, not just in Rotherham, but uh, across, the, uh, across the country. So, um, you know, we, we are going to be extremely vocal. One of the first things that I want to do is to meet the health workers and to see what sort of campaigns that we can do uh, because nothing's over and, 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 uh, until it's over and there's still a lot to, uh, to play for and um, the local hospital is a big, big issue. People feel very aggrieved about uh, what is happening there. We're joined by the way by two of our respect councillors from Bradford, Councillor Shabir, Councillor Khan. Uh, they are uh, living testament. Uh, to the fact that in the wake of a parliamentary election comes elections for councils and the possibility to change the town hall. And heaven knows we need to do that here. Any other questions? And my election agent, Brother Naveed Hussain.